Hello and welcome. Today we have an Astor GN, a big bow, as it's commonly known as. This one I bought down in Geelong, and the guy had oh, about 30 derelict radios. None of them were in particularly good condition. They all had either crack cases or were really, really um, manky or there was big holes in most in some of the speakers. Uh, the wood was rotten on some of them, but they were very interesting radios. I didn't know that he had these ra these other radios, and um, the ad that I looked at. I'd only just seen about a couple of hours before and I was feeling pretty restless and bored and I felt like a, a bit of a drive. So Geelong is about 120 k's away from here. So I took a punt on it and went down to collect it. There were, as I say, there was, I thought there was only one radio that he had. It turned out that his cousin's daughter or something like that had advertised them for him. And then I turned up and there was about five other people there. So it was very strange. I did manage to get a couple of other radios as well. Um, there was a couple I passed over because of their condition, they were pretty bad. But I'll show you those at the very end. I have both of them working now, but um, as with the Astor, I'm still waiting on dial string, which I ordered a couple of weeks ago from Sydney, which is about 900 k's away, north, west, or east, I should say. And it's been to every mail center in Australia bar uh, one in uh, Western Australia. And it still hasn't arrived. So I don't know when Australia Post is going to decide to deliver it for me, but oh, I, I've given up basically on it. All for $21 for 100 meters of dial cord. Yes. So let's get into it and uh, have a look at what I bought. So then we have this Astor GN and it was picked up down at Geelong which is about 120 k's away from here southwest and it's in pretty good condition on the face of it um, but it has been, let's say, modified because on this side here, it's missing its badge, but it's otherwise in quite good condition. So if we move around here, this has been added. Now, the string doesn't seem to be connected to anything. So it just spins around and it's also missing one of the colours from the band spread. This is the medium wave which is missing and the band spread. There's three band spreads on this radio for shortwave and it's quite an interesting set. I have done one of these before. It's the more basic model, which doesn't have the band spread on it, and it's only got a five inch speaker, and it sounds pretty, uh, yeah, they could have done better with that. But this one has a six inch speaker in it, which fills up the cabinet a little bit more. Move this around a little bit more. has a really good back on it. Uh, 
This is the aerial, um, must have been snipped recently. So that is white inside there and this is all yellowed. That's the earth cord. Has an interesting, yes, yeah, so that's the earth, that's the antenna which has been snipped, as I say, and has an interesting switch here. So this is the radio position and you pull this out uh, there's the model number um, stamped at the top there GN 2262 so this is a two-piece chassis so the top is one piece and these Hey, so that's what's rattling. Um, <laughs> learn something new every day. So this is welded onto the, the chassis there. It's not a single bent piece of metal. Um, doesn't have a dial cord on it, obviously. There's no sign of that. So I'm going to have to find and make up or make up a pointer. Has five tubes in it or valves as we like to call them in Australia. This is a Five V. Uh, so it's a five Y three GT, and G stands for glass tube. This is a six V six, which is pretty standard. This will be a 6B6G, 6U7G, and a 6J8GA, according to the schematic which I have up on the screen behind me. It's supposed to work. The guy was selling about 30 radios, including a very interesting later Astor from 1961, which was battery. So there's, there's a knob on the side here, and there must be the tone. That's the band switch, that's the Tuning and this is the volume and yep, on off switch. Okay. I've already got it hooked up to the dim bulb and the, and the isolation transformer and the variac. So I'm going to turn on the isolation transformer and bring this up slowly, turn this on. So 80 volts, hundred and six volts, hundred and fifty.
dial lights are lighting up. Two hundred. The globe is been to glow. So the Variac says 220, what it's said on, but it's only drawing 168 volts. And 4 watts. I just think this thing would work properly. That's 183, and this is glowing quite brightly. Two hundred volts, but the slide regulator is on two hundred and sixty. Oops, just dropped down to 198, 197. So I'd say something is not quite right in this. But static. We'll plug the aerial in. No sign of any stations. Right. First thing I'm going to do is clean all the switches. Well, it sounds like the amplifier section is working. Not the tuner. Okay, I'm going to turn it off. Now, despite this cord looking like a three core cord, it's only two core and it has been replaced pretty recently, I would say, because it says heavy duty. Let 
duty flexible electric cable 440 volts 2 core so I don't know quite what they were thinking but they were thinking wrong so this is the chassis it's quite empty around this section so they've obviously used this chassis for other things It said Phillips on it. We'll have a look in a moment. Let's move this around. This is one heavy set. So this will be a fairly straightforward recap job. Well, there's one right down inside there. This, this one has well and truly shut itself. This one there, so that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one electrolytic there, another there. Nine, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It should have another electrolytic somewhere. Twenty-four, sixteen, it should have, yeah, it should have another sixteen. Perhaps the other one in the can is still in circuit. Although it looks like they haven't disconnected any of the, oh my god. I've just put these in and haven't disconnected the can. So, the first thing I'm going to do, apart from cleaning the, the volume pot and this wafer switch, will be to wire these up correctly. So I have two 16s and a 24. I don't seem to make 25s in 600 volts anymore. A 24 is absolutely fine. So I'm going to turn the air conditioning on and change those caps and I'll be back. Right, we're back. So this involved a lot of gymnastics in the way it fitted together. And I've replaced a few of the wires, although it doesn't look like it. This one was semi-okay. Um, I've left that one there. This, these connections are a bit dodgy, so I'll have to insulate those at a later date. But, and also there was a lot of gymnastics down here, and I replaced the paper cap which was down here. So what I'm going to do is 
first of all is chop these off. It rattles. How bizarre. Um, okay, that is... Mm, yeah, that's a mid-60s, early 60s replacement. This one, I don't know, because it is a strange Chinese or Japanese or Korean or Taiwanese brand. And it's not even... Must be the positive there, I guess. Oh yeah, positive and negative. So let's turn it on and see what happens. I suspect this wouldn't have fixed it, but it'll be much more stable. Yeah, lights are coming up. So that's a hundred volts on the Variac. Yes, yeah, so this is much closer. So that's 200, 200 on the Variac and a hundred and sixty four. 63 that's still not right 220 brings it up to 180 odd 240 on the Variac brings it up to 193 And 260 on the Variac brings us up to 210. So why is it 50 volts out? Our globe isn't glowing quite so brightly. We still have sound. Yeah, you've got to clean this pot. It's trying. Okay, I'm going to attempt to put a, an aerial on it. Might as well strip this back, make things a bit easier. Okay, that'll do for a second. It's trying.
Well, seems we had it on a shortwave band. Even though the indicator indicated otherwise. So let's get on with replacing all these very, very bad paper caps. And the next thing I'll do is I'll clean out the, the switches, I think. But it still doesn't explain the low voltage. Well, that's a thousand times better. So the Virex on about 250 and it's showing 207. Still glowing quite a bit. Probably can't see that, but it's not terribly bright, but it's bright enough. What I'm going to do now is just start replacing these capacitors here. That one looks important too. These two don't look or three don't look so bad um, in terms of operation or do they might be wrong there but I'll leave these to last because they're Im almost impossible to get to I'm leaving this unfinished because I'm short of well I've run out of 0.047s and 0022s so there's 5.47s in here or 0.047s I should say and it seems to be working satisfactorily I don't have enough length of dial cord left to restring it so it'll have to come at a later date but it seems to be working so I'll turn it on The volume pot I can't actually get to because it's a sealed unit with the switch on the back so I don't want to pull that apart and have it break. That's without an aerial. So I'll connect up an aerial. The aerial connection isn't very good. Always down in Gippsland, probably about 100, oh, maybe 120, 130 k's away. Used to have a friend who lived down there. He's moved to Ballarat. 
much the same distance in the opposite direction. Three MP, well that's pretty good. Radio for the print handicap is fairly weak, so it's performing very, very well. So I'm going to put it back in its case. I'm not going to do any of restoration on the case yet, and I'll probably put this back how it was modified, as bad as it was, <laughs> until I can get some dial string and the remainder of the capacitors. So let's put it back in its case. Yes, it's a pity about the volume control, but when I find another one, Well, it's certainly sensitive and it's picking up lots of stations during the day in the equivalent, oh well, it was a 36, 37 degree day here and it's still clear and it's around about 4.30 so it's pretty good and it'll get better when I replace those five caps and Rachel knows the six caps and do a alignment on it so this is a pretty good radio which it which I can't say about the uh, the other one, which is the with the five inch speaker and the just a single band. That is real poverty model. So I have a Mickey from the same era, and I'll show you that if I can climb over the aerial connection. So this has Victoria and Tasmania on the dial and this just has Victoria It's really really hard to tune but anyway uh, that wraps up this video and I'll put this to bed but before I go, I'm going to quickly preview another couple of radios which I got when I was down in Geelong yesterday. And one of them isn't quite so interesting, but it adds to the collection and it's a different colour. And the other one 
starts a collection. So here we go. This one, by the way, is up for sale. It's probably been sold by the time you view this. So I've about, or maybe 10 videos in the queue now. So this may jump the queue or it may not. This one, I've done quite a few of these. The last one, which was the really light beige one, uh, has come up really nicely. And I've put a Bluetooth adapter into it. Um, and it's up for sale. This one, unfortunately, has a hairline crack across it. Across there, they seem to go there. I've so I've noticed on the other one, which I did recently, and have the Bluetooth in. Uh, it's got a mark there as well where it's ready to go. So it seems to be a common problem with these ones. I've seen quite a few that haven't cracked, but have the makings of a crack there and I just thought it was just um, a moulding issue or something like that but it seems to be more of a heat issue the top surface of this isn't great I do have the knobs for it and they're in nice condition the dial plate or glass is in fantastic condition there isn't a scratch on it that's a bit of a mark there but that'll polish out the surround is pretty good it'll polish up the bottom of it has a crack there or a missing piece um, this doesn't work although it lights up what was on the label yep lights up I think for $40 or actually I paid less than that I brought him down a little bit um, I think it's excellent value for money I'll go and get the other one which I will be doing possibly next might have a go at it so I haven't done one of these for a long, long time, if at all. There is this one. Now, I don't know much about these. I know they were from the early 60s. This one is in reasonable condition for the in terms of the front plate it's got a bit of a nick there but it'll be able to fix that uh, again the dial string is missing although I do have the pointer and the screws well it's not missing it's broken been squashed yep and that has actually melted as well. That is not very good. Yes, so this hasn't been threaded through correctly. And you can actually see where it's been forced against there. And of course, Eventually it's cracked. This would have been a fantastic colour when it was new. It's this pink flamingo colour. Okay, well I'm going to make dinner. And I'll catch you next time. Yuck. Yeah.